Welcome to the Artest PCS system installation video. The equipment should be installed indoor to avoid direct sunlight or rain. Keep ventilation clean at all times and stay away from residential area. It is recommended to install in the power distribution room. Equipment should be installed on the flat ground where a solid and firm with flame retardant material surface or channel steel structure. At least 800 millimeters clearance must be kept around the equipment to ensure cool operation. Before the installation, below tools should be prepared. The technician must wear S3 shoes with 1000 volts insulation, electrician overalls, and a safety helmet. The product operates at high voltages. Installation must be performed by qualified licensed technician only. Before we start wiring, firstly let's review the system diagram. Please thoroughly read the user manual before installation. Enter the cables of the system from the bottom of the machine and place them in the corresponding wiring position. To ensure safety, turn off all the breakers and measure to ensure all system has zero potential. Connect the cables of each group of PV modules to the input position of the combiner box and pay attention to the positive and negative terminals. Herein and in the follow wiring operations, make sure you torque check the nuts after connecting all the cables. Connect the PV main outlet cable to the output position of the combiner box. Distinguish the positive and negative terminals and ensure that the circuit breaker is disconnected before wiring. Connect the ground wire to the ground terminal of the combiner box. Make sure all breakers are off before wiring. Connect five groups of PV cables respectively to the number one to five breaker. Pay attention to the positive and negative poles. Connect the battery cable to the bat breaker and notice the positive and negative terminals. Connect ground cable to PE terminal of the machine. Check whether the power cable is securely connected and the positive and negative terminals are correct. Before connecting the PCS100 power cable, ensure that all breakers are off. Connect the battery cable to the battery breaker and notice the positive and negative terminals. The AC output cable is connected to the AC output. Distinguish the phase sequence. Connect the bypass end cable to the end bar. Connect the ground wire to the PE terminal of the combiner box. Check if the wiring is correct and firm. Connect the grid wire to the grid terminal of the bypass. Pay attention to the phase sequence. Connect the load wire to the load terminal of the bypass and pay attention to the phase sequence. Connect PCS cables to the PCS port of bypass in the correct phase sequence. Connect generator wire to the gen of bypass in the correct phase sequence. Connect end wire of power grid, diesel generator, load and PCS to the end bar of bypass. Connect the ground cable to the bypass ground bar. Check whether the power cables are connected properly and firmly. Find a 1.5 square millimeter cable and connect it to the L3 end position at the AC end of PCS. Connect the wires in the bypass to the wiring terminal block of the PCS according to the sequence number. The communication cable needs to be connected in the right order and cable sequence. Check the silk print at the PCBA terminal. Make sure you use the wrong communication interface. Connect the corresponding ports with communication cables as indicated. 
After the cable connection is completed, use a multimeter to verify that each cable terminal is 60 ohms. Otherwise, check the cable connection and dip switch status. The dip status of each device varies with the connection sequence of communication cables. Ensure that the connection method of the communication cables is daisy chain and that only the first and last devices use communication resistors. Dip switch controls communication resistances connect or disconnect. Turn the red emergency stop knob on the PCS door to exit the emergency stop state. Otherwise, after the system is powered on, the air breaker will disconnect. Likewise, turn the red emergency stop knob on the PCS door to exit the emergency stop state. Turn on the DC circuit breaker and AC circuit breaker of the PCS. Turn on the auxiliary power breaker of the bypass. Make sure that all power breakers of the bypass are disconnected. Turn on the 5-way PV input breaker and battery input breaker of PBD. Then turn on the battery breaker to power on the PBD and PCS systems. Enter the PCS parameter setting page. Set battery parameters and enable bit information. Check whether the value on the KPKI page is normal. If there is zero value, please contact our after-sales team to confirm. For all parameter definitions, refer to the description of parameter definitions in the PCS manual. Enter the page for setting PBD parameters, set battery parameters and enable bit information. Check whether the data page information is normal. Check the fault information page for communication failure or other fault information. If no fault information is found, click the power button on the screen to start the machine. The PCS is now running off-grid. Check whether the operating voltage is normal. Turn the knob to off to stop PCS operation. Turn on the output breaker of the combiner box. Check whether the home page and data page are normal. And check the fault information page to see if there is communication faults, etc. Turn the startup knob on the door to power on. When PBD runs normally, observe whether the PV voltage and battery voltage are normal. Turn on the PCS and power grid breaker of bypass cabinet. Check whether the AC voltage on the PCS data page is normal. After confirming there is no fault information of PCS, turn the startup knob to on and click the startup button on the screen to start the machine. Now PCS is connected to the grid. Observe if the data is normal. Turn on the load breaker of the bypass to make it run with load. Turn off the main breaker of the grid input cable and PCS will be converted from grid connected mode to off-grid operation mode. Turn on the main breaker of the grid input cable and PCS will be converted from off-grid mode to grid-connected mode. For parallel system, the connecting diagram will be like this. The power cable connection of each PCS, PBD, and bypass refers to the standalone system. Note that the cables at the same position on each machine must have the same specification and length. The communication cable needs to be connected in the right order and cable sequence. Check the silk print at the PCB terminal. Make sure you use the right communication interface. Connect the communication cable as indicated. Use a shielded cable to connect the C, A, and B interfaces of two bypass. Verify the status of communication dip switches on PCS and PBD control boards. For details about dip breakers, see the standalone system description or the PCS manual. The dip switches should be set as follows. Turn on the DC and AC circuit breakers of the PCS. Turn on the auxiliary power breaker of the bypass. Note that all power breakers of the bypass are disconnected. 
Turn on the 5-way PV input breaker and battery input breaker of PBD. Then turn on the battery breaker and power on the PBD and PCS systems. Configure station number for the two PCS. Number 1 PCS set to 1 and click Save, and number 2 PCS set to 2. The value is displayed on the upper right corner of the screen. Enter the PCS parameter setting page to set battery parameters and enable bit information. Check whether the value on the KPKI page is correct. If there is zero value, please contact the ATES After Sales team to confirm. For all parameter definitions, please refer to the description in the PCS manual. Enter the PBD parameter setting page to set battery parameters and enable bit information. Turn on the auxiliary power supply breaker of the number 1 bypass. And turn off the auxiliary power supply breaker of the number 2 bypass. Set the login password and go to the parameter setting page of number 1 PCS. Set the parameter bypass number to 2. For parameter bypass model select, select a model that is the same as the bypass model. Set bypass station number to 1 and set bypass station number enable to 1. When the parameter bypass station number current value is shown as 1, set the parameter bypass station number enable to 0. Disconnect the auxiliary power supply breaker of the number 1 bypass. Set the login password and go to the parameter setting page of the number 2 PCS. Set the parameter bypass number to 2. Parameter bypass model select should be set in accordance with the actual bypass model. Set the bypass station number parameter to 2. And set the parameter bypass station number enable to 1. When the current value of bypass station number is shown as 2, Set the bypass station number enable to zero. Turn on the auxiliary power supply breaker of the number one bypass. Check whether the data page of the two PCS is normal. Check the fault information page of the two PCS to see if there is any communication faults or other fault information. If not, turn the knob and click the power button on the screen to start the machine. Observe the AC output voltage difference between the two PCS. It should be within 0.5 volts. If it is beyond the range, please contact our after sales team. Turn the startup knobs of the two PCS to off to make the PCS enter the fault state. Switch on the PCS and the load breakers of the two bypass cabinets. Check whether the data page of the two PCS is normal Check the fault information page of the two PCS for communication faults or other fault information. If no, turn the knob and click the power button on the screen to start the machine. Observe the displayed load power difference between the two PCS. If there is great difference, please contact ATES. Turn the startup knobs of the two PCS to off to make sure they enter the fault state. Switch on the power grid breakers of the two bypass cabinets. Check whether the AC voltage on the data page of the two PCS is normal. When there is no fault information shown on the page of the two PCS, turn the startup knob to on and click the startup button on the screen to start the machine. Check whether the data of the two PCS running in on grid mode is normal. Turn on the output breaker of the combiner box. Check whether the home page and data page of the two PBD are normal, and check if there is communication fault in the fault information page. Turn the power knob on the two PBD front doors to on. When the two PBD operate normally, observe whether the PV voltage and battery voltage are normal during operation. Turn off the main breaker of the grid input cable 
and PCS will be converted from on-grid mode to off-grid mode. On the contrary, turn on the main breaker of the grid input cable. PCS will be converted from off-grid mode to on-grid mode. At this point, the whole installation and commissioning procedure is completed. If you have any questions, please contact the Odd Test Service Center or the local distributor.